In Luke's account of the Last Supper, having shared the bread, saying, do this in remembrance of me, and the cup of wine, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood, Jesus then adds, but see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. And it's that precise moment of the narrative which is depicted in da Vinci's famous, perhaps over-famous, painting of the Last Supper, created in the very last years of the 15th century for the Dominican convent of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan, where it still hangs. It was originally painted for the wall of the Sforza family mausoleum, but the plans changed and the room ended up rather appropriately being the refectory. Although much faded, much restored, much copied, especially in tapestries for some reason, it's still a wonderful work of art, da Vinci's second largest, at eight metres wide. The detail is amazing and the depths of the, of the portrayals astonishing. And in the context of the theme for these morning thoughts, healing humanity, healing hands, the way in which the hands are depicted is fascinating. The Wikipedia entry for The Last Supper has a high-resolution downloadable image which is worth looking at. Jesus has just said, but see, the one who betrays me is with me and his hand is on the table. And the disciples have begun to ask one another which of them it could be who would do this. Chaos ensues around the table, but at the centre, almost entirely separated from the others, Jesus is the still point of the turning world. From eternity and to eternity, thou art God. His left hand is open, palm upwards. And his right hand is reaching for the dish, a reference to the verse in John 13. It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. We know which of the disciples is from an unsigned mid 16th century copy of the painting. From left to right, Bartholomew, James, son of Alphaeus and Andrew form a group of three. All are surprised with Andrew's hands seeming to push away the idea that it could be he. Next but one to them, Peter holds a knife in one hand, a reminder that he will later sever a soldier's ear as he attempts to stop Jesus' arrest, and has his other hand on John's shoulder. John has his hands calmly clasped in front of him and appears to have swooned. To the right of Jesus, Thomas holds out a single finger, a gesture which hints at the resurrection narrative and the invitation, put your finger here, see my hands. James the Greater has flung his arms wide in horror and astonishment, while Philip looks like he's saying something like, you can't mean me. Then there's Matthew, Jude, and Simon the Zealot. Matthew and Jude are facing Simon, and all three have their hands facing upwards, questioning what this means. And lastly, three to the left from Jesus is Judas, the disciple who will betray Jesus. He's the only apostle with his face in shadow, and he appears to be looking behind Jesus rather than at him. There are three things that Leonardo wants us to pick up from Judas' hands and arm. The first you may not be able to see very easily, but Judas has knocked the salt over uh, with his right arm, a sign of bad luck then as now, and impending ill fortune. Secondly, in his right hand, he's holding a money bag, the 30 pieces of silver perhaps, or a reference to his being the treasurer. And thirdly, with his left hand, he's reaching towards the same dish as Jesus in a sort of mirror image of Jesus' hand. Until very recently, being left-handed, sinister, was considered an evil omen. Is Leonardo, himself left-handed, making a pointed or ironic reference to Judas, the betrayer, a left-handed person who can't be trusted? Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Where do we place ourselves in this painting? The space at the table for plenty more. As we come to celebrate the Last Supper this evening and bring all that we are, all the questions we have, all our sins and weaknesses, and when invited to come forward to the Lord's table to share in the bread and the wine, will we be able to say, Lord, it is I, I have heard your voice and come at your invitation. 
in spite of all that I am, but in thankfulness for all that you have done. A prayer. Gracious God, you fill our plates with good food and our cups to overflowing. We thank you that your son eats with sinners, even those like Peter who deny him, and like Thomas who doubt him, and like Judas who betray him. We thank you that Jesus still prepares a feast for people like us. Help us to take our place at his table, that we may feast at the great banquet that is to come. Amen.